Welcome to Electron Online. And now we're finally of a set of six videos that showed us how to calculate the transmission coefficient, but in other words, the probability of a particle making it through a barrier. Of course, that depends on the equations describing what happens before you hit the barrier, region one, during by uh, the equation that describes what happens when the particle goes through the barrier and the equation that describes when the particle is past the barrier. For each, we have a Schrodinger equation. We set those equal to each other at the boundaries. So we find the boundary conditions for the equations and the boundary conditions when, the, uh, the, when we take the derivative of each of the equations. We take those four equations and eventually solve it down to this point right here, where we have the ratio of f over a, f being the coefficient that describes the amplitude in region 3 and A that describes the amplitude in region 1. The ratio of those two squared is a transmission coefficient. So eventually we then get this equation right here. On the left we have two terms. We've been working on the left side. We left the right side alone. Then when we finally simplify this term, notice we're going to take this and divide that into the numerator by multiplying by its inverse, we multiply these together, and eventually when you do that, when you multiply these together, you end up with something that looks like this, because you're going to separate the two terms in the numerator. When you multiply and simplify, you end up with this, representing the first equation, or the first portion of the equation, plus when you do the same to the right side, of course we haven't done that, but if you did that, you end up with a very similar expression. The only difference is you have a plus here versus a minus, you have a plus here versus a minus, but again, when you add these two together, this is the ratio of f over a, which gives you the transmission coefficient. Of course, then it would be a little bit more work to take this into its final form that we've been working with, and we're going to show you some more examples of how to use those to calculate the probability of a particle making it through a barrier. But in case you ever need to know how to do this, look at the last six videos, and we'll give you a hint on how to go through it. Actually, probably a little bit more than a hint, much better than what the books typically show you because the books show you the initial four, the, the initial four equations from the boundary conditions and they go, here it is, a little bit of algebra in between and this is what you get. Notice it takes a, a lot more algebra in between, but this is the eventual format that you'll end up with and then we'll show you how to utilize this equation in the next several videos. And that's how it's done.